Hey guys, so a question that I get asked all the time, I get asked to speak on panels about this, I get asked by my friends, I get asked by people I'm just meeting, people in the industry, how did you do it? Oh my gosh, you have 1.5 million subscribers almost. What? You're so impressive. What is the key to success? And every time I get asked that question, for some reason, I'm like, kind of bothered. I think a couple years ago, I would have known exactly how I was going to answer that question. Oh, well, you do this, 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 A plus B must equal C, so you do exactly that. And you know what? That works, because here I am, and that is the way that I did it. But I just think I should take you back a little bit from the beginning of my story, kind of how this whole music thing started until now. So about six years ago, I am a senior in high school. Most of you know this story, I was too scared to sing in front of people, and then I did, and then everything happened from there, and he kind of just here I am. <laughs> I think that was the first part of my story, was overcoming my fears and gaining some confidence and being like, oh, I can do something more than just date this guy and do really well in school. In the next like four years of my life, that is when I learned everything. And I just was in this world of YouTube and music and social media and numbers, 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 views, views, views. Oh, we're on the front page. We got a million views today. Oh my gosh, we're doing great. I just knew that numbers ruled my life. I was on VidStats. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but it's basically a website where it tracks how many new subscribers you are getting every hour. And I was on that thing all the time. I was just watching my numbers go up, and if it wasn't going up, if it wasn't like a couple thousand subscribers a day, then oh man, I was doing something wrong. That life can get really tiring, because in a way it is like a... it's kind of like a drug. Um, when you're doing really well, when your numbers are really high, you feel amazing, and you feel unstoppable, and you feel like you can do anything, and you are the best. And then all of a sudden, when you start to see them drop and they're not doing as well as you thought, um, you crash and burn. And that is what happened to me. A couple years ago when I came out with my first album, my first single, Bones. So I was, I was really, really, really excited about that music video. We spent a lot of money on it. I was really excited about the song. I thought it was a great song, although to be honest, I don't know what it's about. I put out the music video and your guys' responses that day when you put it out were so so amazing and I was overwhelmed and I was excited and I was like okay so if I'm doing my job right this video is definitely gonna get like a hundred thousand views in one day it's gonna be awesome the next day I got 60,000 views and today I would be like that's amazing <laughs> but back then I was like depressed that whole day why I took that as a failure. I saw 60,000 and I said, fail, you fail. Because the way that people talk is, oh my gosh, that person only got 20,000 views in a day? Oh no, they're really suffering. That's, that's embarrassing. And then someone who gets like 100,000, you go, whoa, oh dang, okay, well I gotta work harder. It's just never content. And that was kind of how it was for like four years. That was the community that I was surrounded with. And it's not just my, it wasn't just my close community. It's places like VidCon. When you go and people only really talk to you if you have a certain amount of subscribers or they know your name. When I started out, I loved what I did. But I didn't know why I loved what I did. I just thought that, okay, well, anyone who does music or YouTube needs to eat, sleep, and breathe it. And that way, they will be successful. And that way, they are doing something worthwhile with their lives. That is what I decided. I was like, okay, well, what do I have in my corner? I'm a cute, bubbly girl who has a personality, and I'm a performer. That was my thing, is like, I'm a performer. Even in conversations, I perform. I thought that just being a good role model for kids was enough, just by not swearing. I just find it funny that we like, we'll cover a song, and we'll cut out the two swear words in it, and we'll change it, but the entire song is about sex. What I'm trying to say is, about two years ago, everything in my life changed. I was kind of forced to find myself, and forced to find people who were for me, who were awesome, awesome people. I quickly realized that I wanted to be about something. I wanted to have something to say, honestly, because I started self-reflecting and I started reading a lot of Brené Brown. Once I learned what shame was and what vulnerability was and the fact that it's a, a strength and the fact that I don't use it, that shook me. 
I learned that it's okay to not be okay and I learned that I'm a perfectionist. I took everything of what I was learning and that combined with, I met Jesus as well about a couple years ago. That was life changing. I learned more about what grace was, more about what love was, more about what shame and vulnerability and how all of those come together. And I said to myself, whoa, the world needs to know about this. People need this in their lives. And I wrote out on this napkin with Tori what I'm gonna be about. What is me? What is my essence? What do I just naturally have that I don't even think about? I realized it was loving people and connecting with people and making people feel less alone and just being loud with my love. Loving people unapologetically. You would think by the end of this story that I'm telling you that, and then I found my purpose and everything was even better. And wow, my numbers skyrocketed and I became a millionaire and I was so successful and holy crap, look at me. <sighs> No, that is so far from the truth. <laughs> in the last couple of years, I've actually seen a decline in numbers. And at first that gave me an anxiety attack like you would not believe. I was like, what is wrong? What, what, this, this doesn't make any sense, this is backwards. Like, why is it that when I was putting out things that I couldn't care less about, but just to get views, I was getting views and I was getting the love and attention of a ton of people. And now that I feel like there's some actual depth and meaning, and purpose and intention to what I have to say and to what I'm putting out, now my numbers are low. And that is a question that I've had for two years now. <laughs> I kind of think of myself as the Benjamin Button of the music YouTube world. And by that I mean it all happened very backwards. I was just kind of given all the success and all of the numbers and this platform and the people around me who had a ton of influence. I was making a ton of money, I was living in LA, I was hanging out with the coolest people, and then all of a sudden, when I started doing something that mattered to me, which I feel like is the point of this whole thing, I went into my struggling artist phase, and I feel like that happens usually flip-flop, and that was not the case for me. And to be honest guys, I am still in that stage of my life. There were so many nights on tour that I was like, this, this is too hard. I should just I should just quit. I could do I could do something else. I could go into like film or something. But on tour, I realized just how important it is that I'm doing what I'm doing the way that I'm doing it. For reasons like my music video proof that I put out and to see your guys' comments, that is proof that I should be doing what I'm doing. For the entire Share Your Story project and getting in over 1300 stories, reading through them and seeing just how life-changing this movement is. I guess I'm just here at the end of this vlog to tell you that yes, I know the key to success. If success to you is being number one. And I think I also know the key to success if your success is more than that. Being surrounded by people you love and getting to do what you love. You have to just choose that. You have to make that the most important thing. No matter what happens, you have to make people and loving people the most important thing. Even when your numbers suck. Because they're the ones at the end of the day that are actually gonna matter. But I still am in the struggle and I wanna get out of it. Not because I wanna be number one again, but because I actually believe that what I'm doing matters and the world needs to hear it. So I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna fight, and I'm gonna write songs that are authentic and I'm going to try my best to love on you guys. My career is worth so much more now that I know most of you, well, not most of you because that's a lot. I know a lot of you by name. We have a pretty cool thing going. If you feel like the world needs this kind of a message, then share it with people because that is how we are gonna change the world. If you're looking for how to get more views on your next cover, I'm sorry that you watched this because I did not tell you that answer. <laughs> you all are the best. I love you. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Go make someone's day better. That's really all you can do. All right, guys. Bye.